I've been making money making videos for three years now, so I wanted to put together a complete guide on the best money makers that I've found over the years, which have absolutely no skilling requirements. Now some are free to play and some are pay to play, some require money whilst others don't, but none of them require any skills at all. Starting out with passive money makers, and there's a lot of ways you can consistently make good money in the background through the GE, with a guaranteed profit and practically no effort. Now this is different to flipping because there's no research needed because there's certain items within the game that some players will always buy from you for more than a GE price. And probably the best item that I can think of is mole skins which currently cost 9000 GP each. But in the all books discord in the other tab section players regularly buy them for 9.5 thousand GP each and I'll put a link to that discord below. Now you can only buy 50 of these at a time every 4 hours, so making money passively with this item does limit you to a profit of 150,000 GP each day currently, but you can make even more money by trading the mole skins in yourself. So Weiss and the Gardener in Falador Park will give you a random bird's nest for every one of these that you have, and they can contain nothing, a ring, or a seed. The nest with whatever's in it will be worth an average of 11.2 thousand GP. And the best part is you can exchange all of your mole skins in one go. This one is one of the highest profit margins that you can get for any method that doesn't have any skill and requirements. And if you buy the mole skins on the G for 9,000 GP each and trade them directly with the gardener, you can make 7.6 million GP per hour. And if you want, you can do this even quicker by buying the nest yourself from all books for the 9.5 thousand GP each. That way you can buy them much quicker and that will still make you 5.9 million GP per hour. There are though two downsides to this method, one's that a decent amount of parts is going to cost you quite a lot of money, and the other is that opening the nest is really click intense. The old books discord is not just a great method for buying mole skins, it's also really good for other items that you can make money on passively too. In here there's rules that mean many items have to be sold for a profit, such as feathers which have to be sold for at least 4 GP each and currently cost 2 GP either on a G, or you can buy them directly from a shop for the same price. Basic runes like air and fire runes are 4 GP on the G and they must be sold for at least 6 GP in the discord and the people buying these things are people who are making lots of bolts, hyalkin, barraging or anything that uses that many items that you can't buy them quickly on the G because of the GE limits. The best money in here though that I find is people buying random items like this. These are collectors and they generally pay a lot more than a GE price. Unlike other players, they aren't here to make a profit, they're just trying to hold one specific item to make their own unique collection, but they can't buy enough of them quickly because of the GE limits. So by you giving up one of your GE slots to be able to help them with that, they will pay you very well for it. Now passive money makers like this individually won't make you a fortune, but if you leave 5 or 6 offers in the G for different items that you can sell in all books, over 14 days you'd make enough money to be able to buy a bond, essentially giving you free membership. For this one, there are less buyers than there used to be for sure, but this has to be one of the easiest money makers in the game. Now you do have to be a member, but you don't need any GP for this one. The Dragon Implings give a ton of useful items that are very difficult to obtain on an Iron Man. So instead of gathering the supplies and leveling up all of the skills needed to make those items, it's much faster for an Iron Man to level up Hunter and catch the Dragon Implings instead, but they're very hard to find. So what Iron Man do is they go to the Discord, the Grotto and pay players between 1 and 5 million GP for everyone that they find instead. And whilst they catch them on their Iron Man account, since they can't trade on it, what they do is they pay you on the main account. So a while back I tested tons of places to find out where's the most likely place where you can find Dragon Implings and these are the three best places that I found. In the north of the Gnome Stronghold between these two pens, a lot of Implings get caught inside the railings. So if you simply hot world you find a lot of them caught in here. This area though does have a lot of competition and sometimes you'll see a dragon impling and before you can sell it unfortunately someone comes along and takes it from you. The next one in Al Karid, just south of the mine and west of the runecrafting altar. There are two spawn points here and it's open so nothing gets in your way trying to follow it. The best area though in my opinion is this spot west of sleep as there are three impling spawns here near to this spot and on average here you spot probably between about one and two per hour. Before you spot any of these though, you want to make sure you have a buyer in place. And to do that, you go into the Grotto Discord, go down to in buyers, and then type and sell. It will then message you directly with any buyers that are currently online and what they're going to pay per impling that you find. Now most of these only buy dragon implings, but you do occasionally get ones that buy other ones too. Simply putting a tooth half of a key and a loop half of a key together to make a crystal key has no requirements and each one currently makes you 1500 GP profit. There's no delay at all when you make them, so you can make them as quickly as you can click. 
To save yourself burning out so quickly though, if you put one of each of these in the bottom right hand corner of your inventory, click on one once and then from that point on click on each one twice, which halves the amount of mouse movements that you need and that will stop you burning out so quickly. I did 70 keys just really to test the method to see how quickly you can do them and that took me under a minute to do for a profit of just over 100,000 GP. So right now this can make you as much as 6 million GP per hour but it's very difficult to do this method for a very long time plus it also takes quite a while for the halves of the keys to buy on the GE. Deadman World 345 is a great way to make money in the main game because there are pretty much no bots here and since it's a fun game mode where almost everyone here just wants to PK those players that go out and get the supplies the PKs need to do that without any competition from bots generally make quite a lot of money. Any money that you make in this game mode can be transferred to the main game as well at a rate currently of 0.9 which means for every million GP that you make in this game mode you get 900,000 GP in the main game. That might not sound too great but most of the items sell for a much higher price in this game mode. Snapegrass for example is normally 470 GP but they're 1000 GP each on Deadman. Picking up those in Rimington or Waterbirth Island gets you 25,000 GP profit per inventory. Vials of water which can be bought in packs of 100 at a cost of just 2 to 3 GP each sell for 50 GP on this game mode. Literally everything is massively overpriced compared to what we're used to. And all of the usual money making methods you do in the main game work here but they're just far more profitable although there is two major downsides. Firstly, apart from the safe zones like Varric, Ardy, Falador, Lumbridge, the Tree Gnome Stronghold and so on, most of the rest of Gilinor is PvP and if you die, you not only lose your items that you're carrying, but you lose the 10 most valuable stacks of items from your bank and that includes what you're selling on the GE. However, you do get 12 hours of PvP protection when you first go into this game mode and it is pretty quiet. And that is because there's only a small amount of players which gives us another problem. Most things take an absolute eternity to sell, so any method that you do, you only want to pick items that we use a lot of, and even those will sell slowly here, but at least they will sell. This next one is pretty strange, but because Jagex are banning a lot of bots right now, commonly botted items like these are constantly going up and down in price. As the bots get banned, the price goes up, and then as they make more bots, the price comes back down, leading to probably the easiest way there has been to flip for quite a long time. Now normally you have to do a ton of research to be able to find price trends in order to flip safely but all of the bottled items right now seem to be following the same trend of going up and going down and all you have to do is wait until they're at the lowest price that they've been in quite a while and then buy them up and you can find that out very easily on the site getracker.com which lists all of the commonly bottled items and when you click on any of them it will show you a graph of that item's price history. Whilst flipping is never going to be completely risk free, buying any of these items at the lowest price they've been for a year, with them having the potential to maybe even double in price, is about the lowest risk you're ever going to get doing a method like this. Most shops in old school RuneScape have absolutely no requirements, and some of them buy items from you for more than they cost on a GE. The trick though is to find a shop that buys lots of different items for more than they cost on a GE. And that's because every item that you sell to a shop, the shop is going to pay you 2% less for every one that it's overstocked by. All that means is that if a shop has a stock of, say, one pair of Addy plate legs in it, if it has two, it will now pay you 2% less for the next pair. If it has three in stock, it's now going to pay you 4% less and so on. But to get around this, we can hop to a new world because every world has its own stock. But hopping worlds a bunch of times is quite time consuming, so the more items you can sell to a shop before hopping worlds means you save a lot of time and it makes the method more profitable. One of the best shops that we can do this is the Adventure Store in Narda. Now I bought 100 of each item just to test it and that cost me a total of 12 million GP. Make sure to set Rune Light Menu Entry Swapper up so when you hold down the shift button you only sell one item at a time just to make it faster and then sell three per world. It took me 6 minutes to sell all the items that I bought for a total of 12.6 million GP which was a profit of 600,000. The selling part of this method not including the time it takes you to buy the items from the GE works out at 6 million GP per hour. A cheaper shop that's also free to play is the Varric Sword Shop and there's a ton of items in here but you do have to be a little bit more careful and test these ones first as not every item in this shop is profitable. Another good shop that you can do that I've found is Bridget's Weapon Shop in Shazian also with a lot of items that are generally much cheaper to buy and most of these have a good profit too. There's also a way to make money from shops in the opposite way as there's a lot of shops you can buy items from that the GE buys for more than they cost. One of the best ones with no requirements is the Gardener in Falador. A lot of these plants sell for more on the GE 
but we only buy a lot of the bag plants one two and three always check the prices first but you can usually buy five of each of those per world for a nice little tidy profit the last time I tested this method I did for an hour and I made 3.3 million GP per hour and since then the price have gone up even more in the G so you will make a bit more than that. Buying construction supplies from the stonemason in Keldegrim depending on prices is usually one of the most profitable methods in the game outside of end level bossing and raiding but you do need one hell of a cash stack to be able to do this one. Now before someone jumps on me in the comments, you don't actually need to do the quest to access Keldegrim or even have the requirements to do it. You just speak to the ferryman and watch a cutscene and then you can access the area. The magic stone in this shop, marble block and gold leaf make you between 5 and 10,000 GP for each one that you buy. But just one of each of those does cost almost 1.5 million GP and no matter what you do, do not accidentally buy out a whole stack here or you will lose a lot of money. Since the price of each item goes up by 2% for every item below the usual stock levels, one misclick will really, really hurt. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you set up menu entry swap to only buy one at a time from a shop so you can't make that mistake. Also keep in mind that when you're checking out the prices to see how much they currently are, to include the GE tax when you're working it out. I tested this method with just a 50 million cash stack and that money lasted me just 8 minutes before I ran out. Although after I sold them, that was a nice profit of 670,000 GP, which works out to 5 million GP per hour. It will though cost you 375 million GP to be able to do this for one hour. For some reason, considering the amount of money you can make in this Discord as a runner, it doesn't have enough of them right now and there are generally queues of people waiting to pay people up to 10 million GP per hour. What Find Runners is, is it's a service to players who want to train runecrafting, prayer or the blast furnace and anyone can join them, plus they've got a ton of guides explaining exactly what you need to do here. Running Essence is amazing money of between 4 and 8.5 million per hour, but unfortunately that part does require a runecrafting level as you need to use rune pouches for it, but you don't need any stats at all to be able to run bones in this discord. All you need to do for this is to unnote some bones with files in Remington, whilst the player that you're running for is offering bones in one of the player owned houses. Then by the time they've finished you've unnoted the bones and came back to them, you trade over the bones that you've just unnoted, they offer them at the altar and you go unnote some more bones and you just continue doing that. This helps them to level up faster and they pay you for doing it. Now you do actually need some money to be able to do this because the player that you're running bones for trust trades you all of the bones before he starts. So to stop players being able to just join a discord and run off with the bones, you have to put a deposit down with one of the gold star ranks of between 1 million and 10 million GP. They're so short on runners currently, if you put 1 million down, I'm sure you'll have plenty of people still wanting you to run for them. For this, you get paid per inventory and you get to pick how much you're charging, which is typically between 15 and 30,000 GP. How much you make per hour really depends on the type of person that you're running for. If you do this for someone AFK offering bones at an altar, they'll take over one minute per inventory. Whereas if you do it for someone who's one ticking bones, that usually takes them about 20 seconds. So it really depends whether you want to make more money or you'd rather do it at a more relaxed pace. One of the simplest money makers that you can do without any requirements at all is decanting potions. People who buy potions almost always buy the four dose variant, but some players simply don't know that you can get Bob Barter on the southwest side of the G to decant the potions for you into four doses for free, and instead those players put them on the G in three doses. Now since every dose of potion has its own individual price, and they're not linked at all, more often than not buying three dose potions and turning them into four dose variants and just sticking them straight back on the G will give you the easiest profit that you've ever got. But you need to check, so to make sure it is profitable, you take the three dose price and divide it by three, and then you multiply it by four. Four. That's going to tell you how much a 4 dose potion is costing you by buying the 3 dose version. So if the price that gives you is less than what the price of a 4 dose potion is currently selling for, you're going to make a profit. Now whilst you can do this with free to play potions and some of them are quite a good profit, unfortunately you can't use Bob in free to play and doing it manually just isn't worth the money you make. It took me about 5 minutes to check the prices of a few potions and I put some offers in and just left them in the GE and this is what bought after about another 10 minutes. It then took me maybe another 10 seconds to decant them and then put them back in the G and the super defense potions made me 160,000 GP profit and the prayer potions made me 190,000 GP. There are tons of potions that you can do this for. I spent literally 10 minutes just doing this method. If you put a bit more effort in, you'll buy a lot more potions a lot quicker than I did and make quite a lot of money in this method. That's my top 10 list and I'd like to do a video on really unusual money makers. So if you have any that you want to share with me, I'd be really grateful. So please let me know in the comments.